Hello and welcome to a redo of a video that I did a while ago. Now, the ZOHD Copilot is a plug and play stabilization system that you can put in pretty much any plane that will not only stabilize and help you fly the thing in the first place, but also can be set to do a return to home and also do an auto launch as well. Now, I've just put another one in this thing here. And as I've been recording, this, by the way, is the ZOHD Drift. I'll put a link in the description. Great plane if you're learning to fly. But this one has a perfect little spot for the co-pilot in here. And as I was setting it up, I thought, you know what, maybe it's worthwhile doing another video because I know some people struggle to follow that first video. And then the clincher is one of my Patreons got in touch to say he was having a nightmare trying to set a ZOHD Dart 250, actually, uh, up and couldn't, just couldn't get it to work. So I had a chat with him on Skype. That's one of the things that Patreons can do. And in 10 minutes, we talked him through everything and he was ready to go, went to the field and it flew brilliantly. So this is a redo. I'm going to take you through all the steps you need to do to get the co-pilot set up in your model. So even if you've never set anything like this up before, hopefully you'll get to the other end and it'll all just work. Now, the first thing you need to do is to set your radio up with this channel order. It has to be this channel order if you're going to be connecting via the S bus cable into the co-pilot and that is aileron elevator throttle rudder and then a three position switch as your mode make sure that it is set that way at this first instance we don't care about direction of travel or limits or any of that nonsense just set it up basically like that and you're in a good place plug the co-pilot together uh, plug your receiver in via the s bus cable would be my recommendation you can also plug it in via the pwm cable at the side uh, but if you have an s bus output on your receiver use that it's going to make your life an awful lot simpler once you've got all the pieces together pretty obvious how where they all fit in then the next job is to plug all of the servo leads into the pins on the back of the co-pilot now they're easily identifiable you have s bus then you have aileron elevator throttle rudder all of them are there so just plug in the servos watch for polarity you need to make sure that the black or very dark brown cable the negative wire is on the outside of the board again that is highlighted but it's easy to get it the wrong way around now you need to mount the co-pilot the right way round, i.e. facing up, and there is an arrow on the co-pilot that you need to make sure is pointing to the nose of the model. If it's not installed that way, it's never gonna work properly. So spend a bit of time making sure that you've got a nice spot for it. There is double-sided foam in the kit. Use that to mount it, and that'll help with vibration too. So for safety, make sure your prop is off for this and power it up for the first time. Put the mode switch into the middle position, which will be the middle channel position for channel five, and we're in manual mode, and move your elevator and aileron around. And watch how all the control surfaces move on your model. There's three model types that the co-pilot supports. There's a flying wing, a VTAIL, and a conventional plane. And you want to keep pressing the set button on the adjustment board that's plugged into the co-pilot until the movement of the control surfaces on the plane are right. Don't worry at the moment if they're backwards. Uh, just make sure things like when you move the ailerons, like on this plane, the elevator isn't moving because if they're both moving together, that means there's probably you've got it set for a wing. You'll know when it looks right. Just keep pressing it and it will cycle through each of the three ones in turn. When it's on the right one, stop. Now we have everything moving in the right direction. Next job is to make sure that the controls are now working in the right direction. So when we push the aileron can stick to the right, we should see the right aileron come up. If that's not the case, then reverse the aileron channel in your radio, just as you would set up any other flying wing or plane. So in manual mode, again, keep moving the controls and set up everything on the radio so in manual mode it works in the right direction so when the elevator is pulled down on the radio the elevator rises or the uh, elevons rise or the VTEL servos rise at the back and just work your way through each of them in turn you can also reduce the amount of travel on the radio if the control surfaces are moving way too high they probably are uh, and then you'll get it all dialed in. So this is very similar to how you'd set up a plane manually anyway. 
I'll put a link in the description to simple plane setup that goes through that in quite a bit of depth. You're just doing exactly the same thing while you're in manual mode. Now with that done, we need to check that the co-pilot knows how to correct for uncommanded movement. So for example, if you're flying along and the wind pushes it one way, that the co-pilot is gonna to work to bring it back and uh, control it particularly handy on really light little vehicles like this. So all we need to do is put it in the stabilize mode. That's gonna be channel five in the high value position. And then what we're gonna do is rock the model from side to side. And what we're looking for is that the control surface is moving to correct that uncommanded movement. So if I roll the craft from side to side, as I bring the right wing up, I should see the aileron on that right side that's rising, rise as well. Similarly, on the elevator, if I pitch the nose down, I should see the elevator rise and lift to try and bring the nose back up. Now there's a chance that that is gonna be the wrong way around, but that's no problem at all. On the adjustment board, there are two little potentiometers, one for elevator and one for aileron, Put a little screwdriver in there and turn it in the opposite direction. At the 12 o'clock position is neutral and clockwise is one direction, anti-clockwise in another direction. So just keep moving it until you find that that corrective action is in the right way. The farther it gets away from the 12 o'clock position, the more of a correction you're going to get and you can tune that over time. If it's too aggressive, you'll have the plane wobbling like that as it um, overcompensates. If it isn't enough, then it'll never quite manage to get back to straight and level when you're flying around. So you want it, I would select about halfway and see how it goes for your first flight. The other control on the adjustment board selects whether or not you want a fence or return to home. Personally, I would turn it all the way clockwise so it's set for return to home, uh, position three in the manual, and then that means that when you flick the oh dear switch, uh, you select return to home mode, it's gonna fly back to you an altitude of about 35 meters. The altitude isn't alterable in any way with the co-pilot. So do make sure that if you're flying in an area where you have buildings or trees of more than 35 meters, do not fly behind them. Now you've done pretty much all the setup. Wasn't too tricky, was it? So put it back in manual mode, move all the controls, make sure that they follow the sticks and that all works perfectly. Put it into stabilized mode, uh, confirm that everything still moves okay, but then rock the model from side to side, put the nose up and down to make sure that the automatic corrections are moving to fix the roll, the uncommanded roll or pitch movement that's happening. Again, nice images of all of this as well as the video I've just done in the manual. If it's not working as expected, don't worry, go back to the start, start again, go through the process. The trick is making sure that in manual mode, everything is working properly. Once you've got that set, then the next bit is to make sure that the correction's working properly and treat them as two separate parts. First flight, the maiden flight, always slightly scary. Make sure the center of gravity is absolutely spot on and perform the high five test again. Again, double check, or well, triple check, I guess, at this point, that in manual mode, all the movement is in the right direction. And when you pop it in stabilized mode, that the control surfaces still move to counteract that uncommanded movement. Now, I tend to start off in stabilized mode. Now, when you're at the field, just a quick tip, what you'll find when you first plug it in, it'll just sit there and beep at you and the throttle won't do anything. And you'll think, oh no, something's bad it's happened. You have to have a GPS lock for the plane to work in anything but manual mode. So keep it sat in stabilized mode with my recommendation. Uh, plug the plane in first with the radio and then just let it sit there and get a GPS lock. When the GPS lock happens, you'll hear the ESC initialize because the co-pilot will start sending information out to the ESC and when you hear those confirmation tones you're ready to fly so be aware of that don't worry if it's just beeping just let it sit there and wait uh, occasionally you know it can take a couple of minutes for it to get that GPS lock first time at a field so put it into stabilized mode put the throttle up to about 80 100 and throw the thing and it should just take off and fly level now don't try too much and don't get too far away from yourself. You will, in stabilized mode, find that the amount of roll that you have, the ability, you won't be able to do barrel rolls or uh, or loop loops or anything, but uh, the, the amount of roll and pitch will be limited. And if you let your hand 
hands go off the sticks, the plane will auto level. You might find that when it's in auto level, it's actually losing a little bit of height as it's flying. This is pretty common to be honest. Uh, just make a note of that. Uh, most planes actually need a slightly nose up attitude to fly. Uh, this uh, model actually wasn't any different when I set this one up. But just make a note of that. The initial flight is just about making sure that it flies okay and stabilize and you can fly it, bring it in, land it, and you have done your first maiden. Congratulations. A couple of pro tips if you've got to this far. The pro tip one is I always adjust the linkages, the physical linkages on the model, so that when it's sat on the bench in manual mode, all of the linkages, the control surfaces are perfectly in line with the, uh, the control surfaces, with the feathers on the tail or the actual wings themselves. That's something that I do so that in the neutral position on the radio, all the control surfaces are neutral as well. Now, as I said, you will probably find that the model is losing a little bit of height. That's pretty normal. All I do is I put it on the, uh, on the table, lift the nose up a little bit, put something like a post-it pad underneath, and then you're going to have to go uh, the level calibration. You have to hold an Emo2 radio, the sticks down into the middle position, hold it there for about five seconds. You'll see the three lights on the top of the co-pilot start flashing, let go of the sticks, and it'll probably take anywhere between 10 to 15 seconds, and those lights will eventually stop. When they do, it's recalibrated, unplug it and replug it back in and it's all done. You may have an issue, um, a couple of people have been in touch. If, of course, if on the radio, if you're limiting the throw of the controls so that you don't have too much movement in your ailerons or whatever it is on the plane, uh, you, the radio might not be moving enough. So make a note of what you have set, all that st stuff on the radio. Set all the travel limits back to 100% from wherever they are. Do the level calibration and then go back in and then uh, put the radio back to how it needed to be so that you got the right throws in manual mode. Speaking of manual mode, you will probably find that when you turn stabilize off, it might have a tendency to roll one way or the other, and you can trim it as normal on the radio, just like you would if you didn't have the co-pilot installed. However, with those trims in the slightly different position, when you go back into stabilize, the co-pilot will think that what you're doing is holding the stick over to the side slightly. So it might be fine in manual mode, but then when you go and stabilize, it might be drifting slightly one way because it thinks you're holding the stick in that direction. So if you trim it in manual mode, it's a good idea to do that, land it and then go and do the radio calibration. So with all the trims on the radio set where you need it to, to fly straight and level in manual mode, press and hold the button on the adjustment board and keep it pressed and that will resave all those channel middle positions as neutral and then it'll fly beautifully in manual and also in stabilized too. Now you've done that level calibration. A couple of last points which warrant uh, a re-mention. First of all, the GPS has to have a lock before the throttle will work in anything but manual mode. So stabilized mode, return to home, will not happen unless the GPS has a lock. You'll know when the GPS has a lock because before it has a lock, it'll just sit there and beep. Once it has a lock, you'll hear the ESC do its normal initialization tones, it'll stop beeping and it's ready to fly. And the last cool tip is that once it's all set up like that, you can have a go at the auto launch, which is really cool. So what you do is you put the mode switch into return to home, you put the throttle at 100%, the throttle will not run, it will just sit in your hand like this, throw it straight and level, as soon as it's out of your hands, the prop will start running and it will climb into the sky. Uh, and then as, as soon as you've got your goggles on, if you're flying FPV, then just flick it back into stabilized mode, take back control and enjoy the flight. So hopefully that's been a little bit clearer for those of you that weren't sure of all the steps to go through. The co-pilot manual is a lot better than it was when it first came out, but it's still not fantastic. But if you follow each of those steps, you'll get to the other side and you'll be like me, where the co-pilot is doing a fantastic job flying your plane for you. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. 
check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.